So, hey, Carly. So cool to be having this opportunity to check in with you. And just to introduce to anyone who may be listening, Carly and I are going to be just chatting through three questions that um, feel really significant in this work of awakening to our power and our purpose as women, as female bodied beings on the planet right now. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here with me. Thank you. And I love these topics that we're going to discuss today. They're awesome, huh? Yeah. So yeah, there were there were three questions that Shakti always used to ask, and um, for those people who don't know, Shakti Milan, she was the founder of the Shakti Shiva Academy, and she left her body in 2017. Um, and she was this very significant mentor and teacher in both Kali and my journey. And the three questions that she asked over and over again, and we're going to briefly dialogue them together. The first one being, what do you really, 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 really want? And the second one being, how much bliss, how much pleasure can you stand? Mm -hmm. And the third one, um, being how can we keep falling more deeply in love with ourselves? Mm. So yeah, beautiful, deep contemplations. Mm. So I'm going to ask you to kick us off, Kylie. Yeah, they, they're seemingly quite simple questions, aren't they? But they're not simplistic because when you start to really meditate on them, layer upon layer gets revealed and so we're not going to be able to go into too much depth now but i thought we could start by me asking you a question back Rianne, about mm -hmm. the first question what do we really 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 want and what i want to ask you is what's the role of desire in awakening especially in the context of feminine sexual awakening what is what is the role of desire yeah, I think it's such a hugely important piece. And what really immediately comes for me is um, it's like a circling and a spiraling and honing in on what is it that we really, really want. Mm -hmm. Because us getting clear on our desire, on our deepest longing, is the magic, it's the manifestation that creates our reality. So this piece around that our, our sexual life force is creating our reality, our desire is what is um, creating reality. It's what spins the galaxies and moves the oceans and um, brings the planets into being. And something that becomes really, really clear to me is um, that quest, that that invitation to ask for what you want. Yes. It's so important for us to know what we want. Yes. To know because what we desire. Yeah. Because isn't it true, one, that our desires have been very shame. And so a lot of what we really want, we hide and it becomes covert, it becomes secretive. And, and one of the things that um, feminine sexual essence invites is to be with all the feelings that come up, not to judge them, not to uh, shame our feelings, but rather just to sit with them and allow them to be there and see what alchemy happens as a result of just being with all the feelings of our desire. Yeah. And once we get clear on that and it becomes congruent and, and aligned with our, with our deepest desire, we can create what we want to bring into the world as the feminine. The feminine, as you say, she is the creatrix. She is the one. So we are creating all the time, but most of the time it's unconscious, isn't it? Exactly. And we're creating from, from our unconscious patterning, which is mm. usually based on fear and not good enough and not enough. And so how do we create from... Um, clarity and from what it is that we deeply wish to manifest in the world. How do we create a world that we all really, really, really want to live in? Yeah. 
And that feels super important. And right now we have that opportunity as women to take responsibility, to take radical responsibility for what we're creating yes. and for, for doing it for our families, for our children, for our communities, and also for the men, not yes. only for ourselves. And so that sisterhood piece is also so beautiful because when we start to support each other in this um, creation and this manifestation, we there's an exponential piece that happens. Our magnificence exactly. gets reflected back and we support yeah. each other so powerfully, which is yeah. so wonderful when we gather as women mm -hmm. to be doing doing this work. Yeah, and we've yeah. witnessed it, haven't we? We've witnessed how when women come together and they dream their individual dreams, but also the collective dream and the feminine, she, when we really tap into the true feminine, she wants life to thrive. That's her, that's her goal. That's, you know, if she has a goal, it's just to optimize life, to thrive and, and to be in, in, in bliss. Um, and we can do that individually in our own lives, but when we come together and we dream together, it manifests, as you say, exponentially. This flowering happens and it's effortless. That's the other thing. It's, it's a, because we're in line with life, it doesn't yeah. happen through efforting. It just happens with such ease. Easy flow. Yeah. Mm. And that sort of segues into the next question of you know, how much bliss are we willing to stand? Yeah. Yeah. How much will our nervous systems, our bodies, our beings open to take it all in? and to really transmute everything into bliss. And, and as we, in our earlier conversation, we're talking around bliss, you know, not being just about pleasure and happy and good feelings. It's equally about pleasure and pain. Yes. Um, what we labeled as the good and the bad feelings, opening to embrace and swallow, breathe in absolutely all of it. Yes. And so then, this isn't just happiness. It's not a one-dimensional thing. It's not even just joy. Bliss is the ability to feel it all in our bodies and to be the space, the loving and compassionate space for all pain and all pleasure. And if we can feel all the pain, we can, you know, if we prepare to feel this much pain, we'll feel this much pleasure. So the deeper we go into both, the deeper our capacity for bliss. It's an orientation rather than a, an emotion, isn't it? It's an orientation, it's a relationship to life. Exactly, to, to really cultivating like a yum yum attitude towards whatever life presents. And yes. to deeply know that you know, we can only fly as high as we are prepared to dive deep. Yes. And then to yes. also, this piece is so important, I feel, is like to really get that when we are in a female body, the opportunity and the invitation right here on the planet is to recognize that we actually have a pleasure purpose. Mm. And to ask ourselves that question, are you willing to birth pleasure into the world yeah. through your body, through opening and expanding, relaxing and letting go? and dropping more deeply into the ground of being, into your feminine essence. Mm. And Which it is takes... so counter, it's so counter conditioning, isn't it? We've totally we've made to feel ashamed of pleasure, ashamed of our bodies. And what you're saying is the complete opposite, that that's actually our birthright as women. And I, I've heard that if we really deeply relax in childbirth, that can be an orgasmic experience. And even in death, if we die consciously, mm. we can die orgasmically. And mm. I personally want to explore that that deeply, you know, that, wow, even what we've been told is excru excruciating, which is um, childbirth, and death, which is we so fear, can actually be an orgasmic experience. Yeah. And I, I also feel like, why wait for death? Because I think whether we're prepared or not, that last moment is orgasmic. But why not be present with it and live it here in our bodies, you know, in this lived 
messy, living, loving human lives that we have. Right, right. Moment to moment. Exactly. And, you know, we talked a little bit about not wanting to feel this much pain and then we only get to feel this much pleasure. But something else we do, which is very kind of um, weird of, of humans, is that we actually also upper limit our, our pleasure. We don't always feel that we we deserve to be happy. We, we, we have worked hard enough to, to um, enjoy our lives. And that's a weird thing, isn't it? It's, 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 a, it's a rather strange it conditioning. It is strange, but, and it requires a counterintuitive approach, as well as mm. a lot of courage, because mm. our pleasure is medicine. Our pleasure is yes. magical. Our pleasure is a force of creation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when we, when we bring our pleasure and our desire what we really, really want together, when we bring those two questions together, we really start to create intentionally in a way that I don't, that word exponential, I don't think we even understand how the one becomes many. It, it just has this absolutely exponential, abundant, fecund aliveness um, that is available. To all of us it's available and it's and it's still very new on the planet because even spirituality has been filtered through patriarchal lenses and so we haven't yet fully recognized the power of the feminine feminine sexuality feminine feminine desire feminine pleasure and as women as crones we've got to start claiming it and speaking about it and spreading it as a transmission through our own bodies body to body to mm. other women to other and women and to the men that we love and, and that we make will, love with and and they will just drink this up you know um i used to always tell women about when i'd run red tents and um we'd have all the women sitting in the red tent at a festival and men would be magnetically drawn to the red tent some would even stumble and almost like hypnotized and then you know we'd say hey this is a woman's space and they would oh so, sorry sorry but it was because this this energy that women emit when they're in their bliss and pleasure and when we are a real sisterhood men just absolutely love it it's like honey it's like nectar yeah. to them so yeah it, it it heals them as much as it really heals us yeah because i think that's so important to remember that our our male-bodied beings are deeply wounded too mm, um, and yes. they're also struggling and yep. um, as we've said in a previous conversation patriarchy has no gender it's not a mm. it's a system and yep. we're all wounded and affected by it so yes yeah yes and yes it seems to be that because the feminine is the mother the birther of all life and even men in the womb are initially feminine female i should say not feminine female for the first six weeks that it is her that needs to heal first and mm. that is our responsibility as women is to heal first and then the rest happens in my experience it happens almost by itself it's a sort of spontaneous combustion of healing that just ripples out um, yeah. into our families, into our communities, and into our countries, and ultimately mm. the planet and all our relations. Mm. So are we up for that? <laughs> Absolutely. It's definitely um, something that calls me. I feel a deep impulse in my being to share, share this yeah. with all beings, but um, particularly in this particular course that we're going to be offering with female bodied beings. And um, I think a really important piece to just clarify is recognizing that you know, the masculine and the feminine, of course, belong equally to all of us yeah. and their energetic qualities and perhaps can be triggering and polarizing when we use them as language. Mm -hmm. However, they're just a tool. They're just enabling us to to share a concept so really just wanting to 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 say that um and that the feminine belongs equally to male-bodied beings and expresses through them and they have access to the feminine mm -hmm. too and yet there's also a quality in which the feminine expresses through a female body yes. without it's getting into like the, yeah it's almost like we're the guardians of this precious 
energetic principle that belongs to the whole cosmos. It's, I mean, it is what is creating everything, masculine and feminine, yeah. dancing and lovemaking. And they are in all of us. And then it doesn't really matter what body we're in or what uh, uh, um, sexuality we identify with. Mm. Uh, there's a way that we will either be drawn to the feminine or to the masculine. And I feel as a generalization, and it's very broad, that women, women, people in women's bodies tend to be more like the guardians of the feminine principle. But it's, it's important that we develop our masculine as well. And we were speaking mm. about that earlier, that we're focusing right now on the feminine, but without the holding and the deep consciousness of the masculine presence, she mm. can't feel everything. So she has to have that mm. beautiful masculine within herself as well. Absolutely. And for me and my personal journey and unfolding and journey with pleasure, my discovery has been that they're not separate. Like no. the feminine can only expand into pleasure if the masculine is deeply present. And I'm talking about my own firstly my own masculine and feminine mm. and not mm. even in in relation to the other whether they may be a female bodied or male bodied or or however they express mm. it feels like such an important piece yeah and, and one of my absolute favorite um quotes is from the Tao Te Ching and it, it goes like this it says she or he who knows the masculine but lives by the feminine shall be the whole world's channel and gosh oh. that just opens my heart and oh. I, I feel yes i want to live like that i want my masculine yes. and feminine to be making love inside me yeah. all the time yeah. 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 yeah and it, you know unless we are in that beautiful surrendered receptivity it's not a collapsed um surrender it's a it's an alive vibrant you know opening. powerful surrender yeah it's, yeah it's a, it's a surrender and a receptivity then she can be penetrated to her depth by the masculine who then reveals her beauty and what she's able to create without that without his presence and his consciousness penetrating her form to its depths there is actually no creativity so they yeah. always love us we just happen to be focusing a little bit more on the feminine right now yeah yeah and then that feels mm -hmm. like a beautiful way into the final question that shakti used to drop in so often you know once i was really struggling in my my life and she was I think she was in the US and she was busy and I dropped in on her and she didn't really have time and but she dropped me this pearl and she just said keep falling more deeply in love with yourself beloved and it was like a balm to my being I was like oh my that's all I have to do that is yes. my only task it's the yes. most important thing I can be doing on the planet right now to keep falling more deeply in love with myself as I am, exactly as I am in this moment, exactly. whatever I'm feeling, to just bring the feelings home and to love them, to cry the tears if the tears are required, to laugh if laughter is required, mm -hmm. to grieve, to rage, and to fall in love with myself. Um, yeah. Such a beautiful opportunity for every human being and one that feels like women, female bodied beings really could take to heart as, as a task, mm. like mm. how our perception changes if we can see that that's really what we need to be doing, not yeah. all the other to do's. Um, meditating on this invitation to fall more deeply in love with ourselves and why it's so important. I have this little mantra, which is, um, the one you are looking for is the one who is looking. And it took a long time for me to recognize that the beloved that I was seeking outside of myself was actually inside my own heart. And I started to become the subject of my desire rather than looking for the object of my desire. 
outside of myself. Hmm. And as I did that, I started to recognize more and more deeply that I am love itself. So how can one look for love and think that it's not here right now when actually we are love itself? And this hmm. is a deep, deep recognition of who we are, who we really, really are that we are love itself. And I recognize as well in my teaching capacity, there's no way I can share love with a group or with a client if I'm not embodying love myself. Mm. Uh, how can I possibly be a transmission of love if I haven't yet found it and deeply lived it in my own experience? Mm. Yeah, really feel the truth of that. Mm. And this peace, um, this invitation, it's so counter to the way that we've all, and I say all because I, in a, certainly in a Western um, upbringings, mm. we just have not been um, modeled or, or taught how to deeply take care of ourselves so that we can care for others. Yes. And it's really, you know, what I do for you, I'm also doing for me. And therefore, yes. what I do for myself, how I am with myself, how I love myself, I also do for you, for the other. Yes, yes, that's a, that's a beautiful um, addition to the idea that women just nurture and give love, but that actually as we love ourselves more deeply, we are actually acting as invitation to others to love themselves more deeply. Because we've been conditioned, certainly I was, that I had to earn love. I had to work for love and I had to be a good girl to get love or I had to be a bad girl, but I, 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 had, to, I had to do something. <laughs> and be and, deserving in some way. Yeah. yeah, somehow, and that just being wasn't enough, and recognizing that actually just yeah. being the wellspring of love mm. itself and not having to give to get is enough. Mm. And as you said earlier, Rianne, if all we do is just keep loving ourselves ever more deeply, perhaps that's all we need to do. Mm. as as female bodied woman yeah i feel yeah. that that is actually true yeah and i i also am aware how how much i love these three questions they just open mm. up such deep meditation and contemplation in me and in conversation um, with others and we could go on unpacking them for days indeed and i'd love to just invite whomever feels called to join us because this is what we will be exploring and dropping into in much more depth during our seven week journey which has been so carefully curated by Shakti Milan herself originally as a journey for women to firstly come into their bodies to start feeling themselves from the inside out to start undoing the conditioning of our sexuality um, so that we can live our magnificent fullness and really support each other on our journeys mm. and then come to understand how we're not in any way victims really yeah. and how we are creating the world and mm -hmm. the invitation to take radical responsibility for that is a really big invitation. So It's huge. And to go right back to that beginning question, what do we really, really, really want? What do we really want? Uh -huh. <laughs> so we look forward to all those beautiful women who are going to join us. All the details that you'll need are um, in the info below. And we so look forward to having you join Carly and I on the course. Mm. The bigger, the better. Let's make the circle bigger. Uh, and then we get that exponential effect globally. It's needed right now. The time is now. Yeah, it does feel like now yeah. is the time yeah. uh -huh. for this collective awakening. Thank you, Kali, for chatting with me. Thank you, Rianne. Yeah. Wonderful exploration, so juicy, and I, I just I'm really looking forward to diving even deeper into these questions. 
with a beautiful Greek woman. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So long. That's us. Thank you.